everyone, Goddess of Awesome here. I know it's been a long time. Um, I have to say thank you um, for any of you who have subscribed to this channel. I'm astonished and I'm humbled and I'm just, I can't even tell you, I, I'm grateful to you. You've put steam in my engine. You know, I obviously haven't been around for a minute. I'm kind of an all or nothing person and um, I was just in the tar pit of the field, you know. Um, so let me just recap really quick and then I have a few things I want to talk about. Maybe I'll make a sh few short videos after this with those ideas. But um, so last you see me, I had um, sold a horse, which was a really hard decision to do. It was like personal defeat, it felt like. But it saved me, right? It saved me from feeling the repercussions of Backpage going away. And let me tell you, there's still no site like Backpage. You know, you guys can talk shit about Backpage all day long, but the truth is everybody was there. And yes, you had to be discerning about who you decided to interact with because everybody was there, but you didn't have to look on 12 or eight different sites to make sure you didn't miss somebody who might be in your town that day, you know? So I will always have a soft spot and a, a, an admirable affection for Backpage. Thanks for hanging out as long as you did, you know? Um, so yeah, I sold the horse and then I got busy riding and then it was time to pay more bills. So what do I do? Do I sell another horse and just go down the line? And no, that's absolutely unacceptable. And, um, so I had to go back to work, right? And just so you all know, if there's any workers out there who do similar work, you probably already know this, but the best time of year to work is the end of the year, right? The last two quarters of every year is the best, especially the final quarter is always the best. So that's what I did. I buckled down and I got through that winter of 2018 and then all of 2019, I've just been holding on, you know? Um, I had a tour set up for February 2018, 19, 19, Valentine's Day tour, emailed everybody that I possibly could in my database a week or so before I was supposed to be there. It would have been a sensational trip. I had so many pre-bookings in so many different towns and I would have just smashed it, you know? So here I am ready to travel and I got, I'm packed and I'm ready to go and I get my phone out and I hit the button on my phone to call a lift car and within, I'm kidding you not, within like 60 seconds, I start getting instantly ill and within three minutes I am very ill and it was like dizziness it was like um and and in hotness I was sweating sweating with dizziness I mean vertigo really is what it was I had to look it up later what my symptoms were that was my very first episode of serious vertigo just coming in like that you know push the button the car's gonna come in a second bam I'm instantly sick you know so couldn't take that ride canceled it and I had pushed forward before in previous journeys, pushed forward and just tried to pass through that sickness and I just end up on the floor in the bathroom of LAX for three or four hours until I was laying on my suitcase, thank goodness I'm little, you know, um, until it passes and then I can get it right home. So I knew it was better not to go. So I put myself to bed, got, it, got it, you know, tossed my cookies moments later, was so happy I didn't go forward with the car. And that was last, that was February 2019. So I stayed home and got myself this best I can together, got another trip together, and then I went out for March. March and maybe early April I was out. And while I was out, I had this humongous epiphany hit me, you know? And I realized, and I had wanted to make you a video in May about this, that I just hit, you know, this epiphany. And, and, and this is what it was. I've been sitting on a business this whole time. I didn't even realize that I was sitting on a business until last spring. <laughs> and then I was so excited to tell you about it, right? So my horses, I, I knew when I was going after these greatly beautiful, highly expensive horses that I wanted to do something good with them. You know, it wasn't like I'm just gonna collect these horses and I'm gonna keep them, you know, in the backyard, I'm never gonna do nothing with them. No, the idea is to do many things with them and get them out in the public and get them out into the community and do good works with them and it's all that good stuff, right? So I had, let's back up a handful of steps. I did start doing good works with them 
in the summer of, well, it was August 2018, I think I made a video for you where I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this, you know, and I started visiting the old folks home with my horse, you know, as an equine animal therapist, you know, like animal therapy. So I knew when I started that, in my heart I knew if I gave some of my time away for free in the pursuit of what I love, horses, that somewhere, some way a breakthrough would happen, right? And I didn't know where it would come from or what it would be, but I just knew that, you know, when you pay forward, when you put out good stuff, Good stuff comes back. Same is true for the other. You put out the bad and the bad comes out. But but if you want to switch your life, you want to change directions for the positive, for the good, then the best thing you could do is to go out there and put good into the atmosphere. Put good into the world. And don't expect anything in return because the magnetic fuel in this is that you're doing it selflessly not expecting anything in return. That's that's where the power is, you know? So, or creates that magnetic pull to manifest good things, I think, you know? So I started going twice a month to old folks' home, and then as I'm getting my rhythm down, you know, and it's getting easier to get out there and wash the horse and keep to the schedule and, you know, a whole new rhythm. As that rhythm got easier, I thought, oh my gosh, I can do this every week, you know? So I did. So I started going every week. And still, again, this breakthrough didn't happen yet. The idea that I've been sitting on a business for a while. It didn't happen until after the Valentine's Day trip went down the drain for the vertigo. Then I'm out there in late March, April, early April. And it just strikes me. It just hit me one day. Oh my God. I can use my horses for making money, which is what I always knew in the back of my head when I went forward obtaining these horses. I'm going to use these horses to make money. I knew I was going to. I didn't know how, but I knew I could somehow, right? So, you know, every time I go to the old folks' home, they always ask some of the people, visitors, family members who are visiting their people who are in there, will say, hey, is there another way we can come see your horses? And so many times I would just say, no, I, I'll just see you next time. How many missed opportunities did I have? So many, so many, but I didn't see it, you know? Also, the opportunity of maybe putting a, a, a flyer or a pamphlet or a brochure in the old folks' home because they keep telling me, anything you ever need or want, if we can ever help, let us know. And I've just been saying, thank you, no worries, it's all good. Now I realize, my God, you know, I could be doing pony parties with my horses and they're gorgeous. They look like unicorns and I could slap a unicorn horn on them and they're gentle and they're mellow. And so I could, I could do pony rides for income. I could, I could also do um, weddings or photography or, I mean, once the pony idea came in, so many new ideas started blossoming, you know? And I realized, oh my God, I, I, I've been sitting on this business. I had no idea, you know? Now, my horses hadn't really been ready for this until maybe then, because I do have a young herd and I've been sending everybody to training and we're getting accustomed to doing trail rides and all, you know, the environment of where we live. But everyone's settled in good now and most everybody's trained well. There's no reason I can't mount up people on the horses and even better rather than giving them a reins and having them control the bit which is a little tender for me I don't want people pulling on my horse's face or mouth solve that solution solve that problem with this solution I could just lead them lead them with a with a halter and a lead rope with a little kid on its back they, they don't want to do the reins they just want to go for a ride same is true for some adults you know they're just happy to sit on a horse's back and and go for a ride, you know? I mean, I'm in Los Angeles. This is kind of rare, you know? So here I am all excited, pumped, pumped to share this I, this epiphany that hit me that, oh my God, I'm sitting on a business this whole time. You know, the, the, where I came to realize that was from doing the selfless work, right? From doing the, the animal therapy and just giving my time away. And it took months for that to happen, weeks, but it finally, it sprouted, it sprouted, you know? So I get back from that trip, you know, that I had this epiphany and I'm all excited to share this with you. And I, um, 
I want to get my horses out exercising and you know I've been gone for a few weeks so you live you live and you learn you know I shouldn't have ridden my horse this particular night for a handful of reasons a I was tired so I wasn't on my a game but I took him out anyways and B there was something in the air that night and he tried to tell me and I wasn't getting the information it wasn't reading it wasn't registering you know so I already know we're gonna go for a short ride it's not like I'm taking him out for even an hour and I never go for a short ride with this horse but I thought let me just get him out for 30 minutes you know I've been gone for a few weeks so we'll just go around the block and we'll come back so he didn't really want to pass the train tracks so we turned around went a different way we get past the train tracks in a different way and now he's super excited to get home. I'm thinking, you know, it's a short ride anyways. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna go with this. We're just gonna go home. What I should have did was dismount and walk that horse home. The reason why I didn't do that is because my arms are so strained from doing massage therapy forever. I did not want to handle him with my arms. You know, he'd be pulling on me a little bit probably because he was, there's some energy in the air. Um, so I decided I was going to sit it out, right? I'm going to sit on this horse and at the last possible moment, if I have to, I'll dismount. Well, that happened. What happened was this 20 minute long or longer freight train is going through our neighborhood, which never happens, but bear in mind, I'm out at 1030 at night right now, right? Maybe it's pushing 11. So that's probably when the freight trains do come through, right? Because if they came through the day, just LA people would lose their mind. You can't sit for 20 minutes or 30, wait for a big train to come by. So that's essentially what happened to my horse was that this train is in our way and he's starting to lose his mind. He wants to get through the train, past the train. I could tell what he was getting ready to do was go with the train. You know how back in the day they used to rob trains, you know, horse people, cowboys used to try to hijack a train well that's what we were getting ready to do and the minute I realized he was going to do that I was like oh hell no I'm off this horse you know so I dismount and you know me being a, a indoor cyclist and probably had some power in my body I wasn't aware of and I just threw myself off that horse right just one leg and there's the next and I, I dismount I just dis, I, I disconnect the minute I disconnect from his back I can feel him accelerating so now physics is not on my side right because I'm leaving this horse's back. I'm throwing myself off in a certain way. He's starting to accelerate, so I'm not where I was when I first started to dismount. Now I'm way across the street, you know? Landed in a ditch on uneven ground. One leg, perfect landing. Other leg, well, you know, the earth came up a little fast, you know? And I kid you not, here's, here's my foot. It did this, bam! I mean, it literally turned upside. I seen the whole bottom of my foot looking at me for a split second, heard a snap. Still in complete denial that I could be hurt, you know? Tried to get up, couldn't couldn't get up. That was hard. Didn't cry. I was psyching myself out. I'm tough, I'm tough, I'm tough, tough cowgirl. I can do it. You know, I'm trying to get myself up. No, it didn't happen. So thank God, you know, there were two people there. It was a long freight train. One car, very kind people, put me in the car, took me just up, just three, four doors down is my house. You know, I always say it happened so close to home. It really did, you know. And then um, another guy who was savvy with horses ran after my horse, thank God, and brought him home, you know. Here I am using a shovel for a crutch because I, I don't have crutches. I've never needed a crutch maybe since I was in elementary school, you know. <laughs> So I was going to make you a video telling you about my great epiphany with uh, my heart can use my horses for, for income and how exciting is that and I break my ankle and then, okay that was like 11.30, 11 somewhere in there and then just a few short hours later my one of my mares falls. So that's what was in the air, right? The stallion knew the baby was coming. <laughs> He's supposed to be watching his mare's back, right? He's supposed to be watching her to ward off any predators, to stomp a coyote to death that's going to come try to get his mare while she's down or the baby. I took him from his post, you know? I didn't understand what he was trying to tell me. And that's my mistake because I should have asked him what's going on. But I never stopped to ask what was going on because I was so determined to go for a short ride because we were going to exercise and this is how it's going to be and this is what I have going on and that's what it's going to be. <laughs> and so 
but you just have to leave room for flexibility in life, right? You can have ideas, but you have outlines. But you try to stick to things too strong sometimes and you break. <laughs> That's what happened to me. I was on crutches for 11 weeks. It was awful. I live alone. It was awful. Barely scraped by. Thank God I had a few beautiful souls in my life, you know, kind of helped a little bit here and there. And also I had, you know, the great clients who came in to see me, even though I'm wobbling up on crutches and one leg, you know, ankle surgery. So they put the bone back, you know, dislodged, displaced the bone setting a little bit. So they put it back and cracked my fibula, you know, clean break, but they, they bolted that back. And now I'm made of metal down there, you know? So needless to say, my exuberance of taking crazy dismounts are, has kind of come down a little, you know? <laughs> I think I had this superhero feeling in me, like, oh, I could do anything physically, I can do it. And that's a good thing to have somewhere. Also a good thing to have the, a little bit of reality. <laughs> I'm a human and apparently the stuff I'm made out of can break under enough pressure, which that was, new you know so anyway so that was that and let me try to wrap this up really quick um so that's why you haven't seen me for a while you know after after getting back on my feet i had to go immediately into hyperdrive right to pick up all any loose ends you know i feel like i'm still picking up some of that slack and it's january and i think i i hit I hit chore again in September, right? I, I think, I don't even think I was fully off crutches yet. I still went on tour, you know? Um, yeah. Took it, yeah. So, um, anyways, we're in the blah, 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 blah. So then the holidays came, and, you know, I'm still thinking about doing horse stuff, you know? And... You know, obviously it's 2020 now, and so more epiphanies happened for me, you know? A um, couple things, and then I'll say goodbye. The idea of using my horses for income is superb. It's amazing. It's, it's taking me to think outside of the box. Like, what can I do to promote it? What can I, what can I, how can I get my name out there? What should I, you know, should I only do private parties? Maybe I could do a once a week, I mean, excuse me, once a month community party for a lot less money, you know, like a simple day pass for four hours. Come in, meet the horses, say hello. That would give people an introduction they could choose later if they wanted to come back and have a private party, you know? So, so this is what I'm thinking about gearing up towards. And, and also too, I, Another epiphany happened somewhere in December is, and this is what it is, horses, working with horses, spin class, being in that kind of energy, the energy that's present in a really good spin class when it's high energy and it's, it's, you can, the trance formation process is active, <laughs> like when you're in the middle of it. That's what I love. I love that so much. And I realized in November when I gave my, when I did it for my first pony party for, in a while for my niece, she turned her birthday in, in November. When I did that pony party, first I didn't know if I could still, cause my, I can barely hardly run that good. You gotta be able to run. Not that you'll have to, but you might need to. And if you do need to, you better be able to, you know? So, you know, this pony party, all these little reservations in my head. Can I? Can I? Should I? Can I? And when I did it, you know, my aura completely changed colors. I could feel it. I could feel my energy field changing colors in a really good way. I could feel swirls, spirals of color, like yellow, gold, swirling into my energy field like stoking the fire but in a really good way and that all happened from just hosting my niece's party her little pony party and it really dawned on me oh man this is the energy this place not just a place the space the space of energy whatever that is when i'm immersed in the horses when i'm 
working with children when I'm do when I'm just immersed in what I love, how much do I light up? You know, how much do I light up and how much does it affect the colors of my energy field? I can I can feel it in real time. And so that was very fueling, you know? And I went into my December like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna grab the bull by the horns. I'm going to advertise the hell out of my horses, my barn, I'm gonna get it out there. You know, um, I did a parade, a couple parades in December. Again, so much good stuff in me, like, draws it out. It draws out the good stuff in me being emerged in e equine activities, you know? And those parades almost killed me. I had so much sewing to do, and I had a helper helping me, and even between her and I, Whew, we barely got it done, but we did get it done. And when we're doing one of the parades, it was the night parade. And I've now had, I have now have a, a term for this sound that happens. It happened once at one of the pony parties. It was just amazing. It's the sound of a true, a true giggle. A, a giggle that is like someone's tickling your belly, but like in the best way possible. And that uncontrollable, uncontained laughter just comes out. That's, that's, that's where it's at. And when those little giggles happen and they just happen at random from people who I don't even know, that's something about that. It does so much for me. And it makes every effort seem effortless. And it took so much to get to that parade. And it was so worth it. <laughs> when I heard these little girls, they were in unison when they said it. So they said it at the same time. And they must have been about six years old, somewhere in there, five, six, somewhere in there. And they said, as they seen our group come, the gypsies. And when they said that, it wasn't so much the giggle I just described, but it was extremely related. It was very close to that. The energy that came out of them was very close to what I now called a golden giggle. So those giggles that come from the, the belly, the deep side of the belly, that it's getting every part of your soul, you know? I call those golden giggles, and that's my fuel. That's what I, my motivation to keep moving forward, you know? So now I'm all excited, right? I got a thing up on Yelp for my barn and I'm hot to chop for the Rose Parade 2021. I'm gonna be there, watch, I'm gonna be there. And all the other things that, that I wanna do with my barn, you know, it gets so excited, I'm so excited. And then I start Googling my name and my barn name and my address and I'm thinking, well, how much stuff can be put in Google before negative stuff starts coming up. Cause you know, I've been arrested for hand jobs before, you know, so I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. There's far worse things the person could be in trouble for. But needless to say, you know, parents don't want their children probably, you know, idolizing or looking up to somebody who might've done hand jobs, which is weird because look at, look at Betty Page, look at Marilyn Monroe. Like they were renegades in their time and now they're revered as these amazing goddesses, you know? Um, so it's just interesting. The perception of a time can change some perspective. Um, so long as our story short, as it keeps going, the story. Um, so yeah, I kept Googling things, right? I'm seeing how far things can go before negative stuff comes up. And then a new epiphany came. A new epiphany. It was like, you know what? I'm never going to get this stuff to go away. A, I have some choices. I could just change my name, right? Move town, get out of this area, not be associated with this address, and try to live under a rock for the rest of my life and let this huge shadow suppress my light and suppress my goodness and suppress all the things that flourish within me. Or I could, I could get wise with it. What I mean about that is this, you know, like the more positive things I put online about my horses and my barn and my name, 
those just keep going to the top. And, and the more those are on the top, it pushes the other stuff even down, even down, even down, even down. So yeah, maybe one day you could find that stuff, but you might, ha one day soon, you might have to sift through a whole bunch of positive stuff to get there. And isn't that great? You know, um, that was a good thing to come to connect to you because I definitely had an oh no moment where, oh no, well I can't do this because, because this address, because this, because my name, because I'm tainted, all these things to, to squish me, right? Those all, all the fear came in. Oh, you know, you can't. Oh, no, 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 you can't. No, 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 you can't, you know? Because, 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 because. And then I realized, yes, yes, I can. No, that doesn't matter. And all I need to do is just keep creating new positive content and just keep putting it out there, you know? So that's what I'm doing now. You know, and here's the next, the last little bit, and then I will say goodbye. As, um, after Christmas, before New Year's, I was talking to my best friend, Rebecca. I have a few best friends, but this is a long time best friend. And, um, we were, I was sharing with her everything I'm telling you. And I told her something, I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh yes, it was about the energy, right? Fo following the bliss following those moments that create these um, this amazing energy experience for me. And I'm talking about joy and goodness and happiness, lightness, playfulness, all the things in life we want to cherish, right? All the things, celebratory, like celebration energy for all things good, that kind of thing. You know, that's where I want to be. I find that in my spin class and I find that with my horses, working with my horses. So I'm telling that to my best friend, Rebecca. And I told her, it dawned on me, what I need to do, what the key for me is, is to follow that. Follow the places where I feel good. Keep putting myself there as, many, as much as possible, you know? And, and she said something and it just, it was, whoa, <laughs> it was huge. So what she said was, you know, here all this time I've been focused on getting out, right? Getting out of the industry. I want to out of this industry. I want to do something different. I want to be out. I want to get out. I want to get out. Something shifted when that thought process changed. It changed from I want to get out to I need to get in. I want to get See how small that is? It's it's so subtle. It's like the grain in your finger line. It's just little. It's a little shift. It's so small, so significant. It puts you in such a different groove. Now I'm gonna with that thought process. It's not about getting out. It's about getting in. It sh it just put me in that next groove, and that little shift is where it's at. That's what it is. That's the secret. That's the key. The key, it, it's not about getting out. It's about getting in. And what do you want to get into? See, for me, it's the horses, right? I just want to share their beauty with the world. I want to create moments for golden giggles to happen. I want to take people's breaths away in very, very good ways. I want them awestruck and dumbfounded by the beauty of these celestial creatures. And I want to share that with people again and again and again because I experience that every time I look at them and I want to share that joy with people. So that little shift, it's not about getting out, it's about getting in. And the, the realize is chasing the energy, the good stuff, putting myself in places where I'm supposed to be, the good stuff, you know, that's about getting in. And it... Like I said, I did my Yelp and I, you know, I'm finding all these different ways I can get in, I can get in. And that, that has been so powerful for me. So powerful. And so the next question was, well, what, what else can I get into? That's good, you know, and it brought me right back here to you. This is the next thing I need to get into. I, I need to be here every day with you. So here's my little video journal. You're going to have this YouTube channel for that. I finally found a way to create my paid member site. I don't know if you've seen any of the videos before that my, my web team dropped me. 
and that was like it was like a sucker punch to the stomach you know I, I kind of was expecting to have that happen 18 months ago or a year ago so anyways I found uh, I'll do a video on them um, I found this company who makes website templates for paid member sites so I actually can bring you my hand job lessons that I think are is very valuable to people and not just girls to boys not just women in their 40s not just women in their 30s women of all ages 18 and above of course you know but information for everybody you know so so that's what it is it's not about getting out it's about getting in and the more I get in the more they, I'm out, you know what I mean? You can only put your focus in so many places and you focus about getting into something, you know, real quick and then I'll say goodbye. My best friend Rebecca on that phone call conversation, she thought, she said out loud, she's like, you know, Sarah, who would have thought, you know, that you had a rhyme to your reason, that here you are purchasing multiple horses and it looks crazy, right? Like where, why is this one person acquiring so many horses? And then you start to see what it is that I wanna do with them and what I am doing with them and the idea is more of what I want to do with them. And then it all makes sense, you know? Like, like my friend Rebecca, it all makes sense why I went for those horses and I'm actually using them for things. And yes, I do need more than one. I need more than two. I mean, anyways, you more good stuff to come. I want to learn how to hitch up my horses to a wagon. I want to take people for free wagon rides, the elderly in my neighborhood um, and other neighborhoods too, you know? So, so that's the bottom line, you know? The bottom line is fear is strong. And it's real, but there's many ways around it and through it. And what's helping me is following the feel good, you know, following the spin class, follow, playing with the horses, you know, working with the horses, taking the horses out. Tomorrow I'm taking the horses to the elderly. I'll make you a video just after, you will see. I'm not even joking. It feels like every cell in my body is glowing, literally glowing. Like I would say with golden light. I feel like golden light is just all inside me, down to the molecules, down to the little itty bitty, each little cell, bing, just full of light. And you'll, you'll see it, it's just there, you know? So, so that's that. So you haven't seen me in a while, but you're going to see me from here on out. So I am the Glass of Awesome. This is Sarah Sunshine. Thanks for being here. Please subscribe, and I'll have more for you soon. Bye-bye.